Hey, what's up guys? It's Colst here bringing you this new video. All right, we're going to be trying something new here today, a new series. For anyone that's been around the channel for a while, we used to have an old series called the Draft Analysis Series. Going to do something slightly different here. Instead, going to be doing a deck archetype analysis. And for this, we're going to be using a 12 Hunter, which I think was a really good representation of the kind of high roll archetype you can go for, which is the aggressive Swing Hunter. What does that mean exactly? I'll get into that in a little bit. But before we do that, I haven't had a chance because I've just been uploading Twitch reruns. So I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys in the YouTube community for so long. But I just want to say, like, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Really kind of in awe of how much things have grown over here. And if you want to support, don't forget to like and especially subscribe because subscribing gets us towards that goal to partner our YouTube channel. And that would just help me out a lot. So thanks a lot, guys. So with that, let's get right into talking about this list. So the way I describe this deck, it's like an aggressive swing hunter is what I'll call it. It's not really a true aggro deck, but you can see it has a very similar curve to an aggro deck. It's a very low curve. At the same time, it has a deceptive amount of value. This value is generally created by a very few specific cards. The imprisoned minions like the Felma, the weapons, the Desert Spear, and the Stormhammer or Eagle Hornbow if you can get that too, or the Primordial Explorer. Those are the main value engines of this kind of deck archetype. So as I mentioned, this is kind of a high roll deck archetype is what I'm saying, because you're very dependent on those very specific cards. If you can't get those cards, you can't really go for this archetype, in my opinion. You can try, but it just won't work out very well. But I think this is kind of part of the magic that is Arena. It's like, it's one thing I've talked about a lot is it's important to get the most out of a bad deck. But in my opinion, it's equally important to know how to get the most out of a good deck when you're offered the good options. So that's kind of what this is going after here. And the reason I think this deck archetype is so strong is because really it uses some of these specific cards, the cards I mentioned, and also specific tempo cards like Freezing Trap, Hunter's Mark, and just the weapons in general. These are cards that get more tempo than most classes are able to get and that's something that's pretty unique to hunter like warrior has it with like imprisoned ganard for example but in general stuff is pretty fair right now a lot of the really good tempo cards honestly are in the neutral set but hunter has more tools that do this than really any other class right now so this this archetype really takes the most advantage out of those tools and how do we do that exactly so let's go back to that initial point about looking at how extremely low the curve is, right? So a standard deck, you're going to see a much slower curve. You're going to have a lot more 4, 5, 6 mana cards and a few 7 plus mana cards, right? But in this deck, you top out much more closer to like 6. You could, you could still take like a Twin Tyrant, but you don't actually even want one necessarily. But you're also not going like super, super aggro like at the same time. And you would say like the goal of like, if it was like a true aggro deck, your goal would be probably trying to kill your opponent like turn seven or eight. I don't think you, you're you trying to kill your opponent quite that quickly in this deck. You're going for more like a turn nine, turn 10 lethal. That was around where the average lethal was in this deck. And possibly the most important distinction to draw from a typical aggro deck would be the number of one drops. Basically non-existent here. We have just a Guardian Ogmersh in this list and that's a lot of times we wouldn't even play it on one. And you don't even have that many two drops either, outside of the Imprisoned Felmaws. The Imprisoned Minions are just amazing. But really, you can see even past that, you don't have that many three drops. You have weapons and a griffin, for example, reactive stuff. You're really not even trying to take the board at all until turn four. But then once you take the board on turn four, because that's when the Imprisoned Minion kicks in also, you just hit the board with a flurry. That thing goes on, the weapon gets his second charge in, you get more drops in, and then you just all of a sudden are dominating your opponent. And critically, that's also when your curve kicks in because you have such an extreme number of two and three mana cards. From that point on, you're playing two cards per turn. So you put out just an incredible amount of short-term and mid-term value that your opponent just isn't able to keep up with, most likely. And a lot of times, the way Arena works is... The turns where you're able to start playing like two cards per turn, that's when a lot of decks really start to hit their power turns, right? So the benefit of this deck is you get to do that really early, like as early as turns four, five, six, because of the low curve. 
where a slower deck might be waiting until close to 10 mana before they can really do that. So you just get to hit these power turns so much earlier than the other, your other opponents. You get to get such a massive advantage out of that. I just want to talk a little bit about part of what makes Hunters so good with this strategy. So really a lot of it is how they have some of these very specific cards that synergize so well with each other. So the cards I'm talking about are like Freezing Trap, Hunter's Mark, the Imprisoned Minions, the Weapons, Desert Spear, Storm Hammer especially, but also Eagle Horn Bow, and the Promoter Explorer, of course. So here you have a circle of cards that just do extremely well in tempo right especially like freezing trap the weapons and even primordial explorer is a great card in itself but they also kind of cover it, them each other and do extremely well in generating value at the same time the imprisoned film off for example is very difficult to deal with efficiently on both cards and tempo it's nearly impossible either it'll two for one or your opponent's gonna have to put more than two mana into it right and the Primal Explorer is the same way. It'll probably trade about evenly on tempo, but it also generates a dragon. The weapons will trade relatively well the turn you play it, but then you get more charges. The Freezing Chaps, on the other hand, won't do quite as well, but you can use it to neutralize a slower threat from your opponent. Your opponent might try to drop a Sky Stalker, for instance. And then you can just neutralize a 6-mana threat for way less, and you make it so expensive they can't afford to replay it. The game will probably be over by then. So you have a circle of cards here where if you get the full combination, it's going to be very difficult for any slower deck to, or really any deck, to contend with you. Because even an aggressive deck, you're going to be able to slow them down enough that they're not going to be able to kill you. So you're going to be favored against basically everyone if you can get this whole circle of cards. And I think above all, the critical card here is, of course, one of the best hunter cards ever printed, Primordial Explorer. It's... A perfectly valid card itself and then also has like one of the best battle cries in the game with in arena which is discover a dragon because it's just it's an unmatched amount of value and discovering those dragons really allows you to get away with having a much lower curve than you otherwise would possibly be able to because you can always get bailed out by getting a twin tyrant or even like a death wing whatever you might need and the icing on the cake is the storm hammer in the slower matchups because really in arena, if storm, I think even in constructed, honestly, but like in arena, if this thing gets more than three charges, it's even if it gets three charges, it's already completely unfair. And you only need to play it with one Promoter Explorer, and the Promoter Explorer gives you another dragon, which might give you a fourth charge, and that thing survives, gives you a fifth charge. Like it's just your opponent can only take three damage to the face too long, right? People don't heal in arena very much. So, yeah, that card's awesome if you can get it. And I do want to talk a little bit about the top end of this deck. I will say this deck doesn't have, I wouldn't call it the ideal top end, but it had a good enough top end to get us to 12-0 here, right? And even though they aren't the best cards imaginable, you can see like they are like the Rusted Raider, the Rosnet, the, the Dragons, which can be very useful, and the Gyrocopter. And the thing you see about most of those is they either generate more value or they directly interact with the board and that is something that's very good you can also take things like the savannah high main the sky stalker these kinds of minions but those are the two types of lake and cards you really want you don't really want something really slow like an eight mana 12 12 you know something like that you really want something that interacts with the board immediately so even a twin tyrant is passable but You'd rather have something lighter, really. I will say one thing, the Gyrocopters have been deceptively good in this meta because your opponents tend to play this card, you know, the 7 mana 410, that if you don't have the Hunter's Mark for it, a Gyrocopter is actually a pretty efficient way to get through it. And as we mentioned, like, the goal of this deck is to really on, like, turns 4, 5, 6, take dominating control of the board to be able to push that face damage and anything you can do to just get through whatever taunt your opponent plays on the next couple turns is going to be very valuable. The Garcopter does fulfill that function. And I want to go back to an earlier point. I did mention how this is kind of a high roll comp. Like as a, as you, if you don't get the Primordial Explorer and the weapons, the Diving Griffins, for example, it's going to be really hard to pull this kind of comp off. So if you're kind of going for this kind of comp, I want to talk about how you can really adapt if the deck isn't, the draft isn't going quite how you want it to. 
So essentially, you're going to have to make a choice at a certain point. You're going to either have to say, okay, I'm going hard aggro, or I'm going hard control, or just a general mid-range. But in any case, even a mid-range is more in the control direction from this deck, so you're going to want to go, sl go slower or faster. In the present meta, as of recording this video, I don't recommend, honestly, going the aggro direction very often. It's definitely an option, but it's just... There's all these cards like Rusted Raider, and cards have big taunts. There's classes have big taunts. There's tools out there that will prevent you from really getting there if you go the true aggro direction. And outside of this kind of swing style, I don't think Hunter is actually the best equipped to really play aggro, true aggro right now. I think you're better off going the slower direction. So the way that's going to look, you're still going to be taking a lot of the same and prioritizing a lot of the same cards, but if you don't high roll quite as much, the effect is you're going to have to just lower your... You're going to have to make your curve a little bit heavier. And accept a few more slower value cards. Anyway, that's I think about all I have to say about this kind of deck archetype. Hope you guys can get this kind of card quality first of all. But also go for this kind of archetype. And let me know how it works out for you guys. Of course again, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Make sure to comment as well what kind of stuff you want to see because really I can do anything here, you know. So if there's any kind of video you want to see, make sure to let me know. I'm thinking about doing a more generalized tutorial video maybe, which I think would be, I don't want to do a full arena tutorial, but I'm thinking of doing one which is more a kind of an addendum to other videos that have already been made by other creators, but more, more of a response to kind of what's happened, how the meta has changed in drastic ways in the last six months with the sharp increase in card quality that has been happening since you know descent of dragons but if you have any other ideas of course feel free to leave it in the comment section but of course thanks a lot for hanging out as always guys and we'll see you later